players, keyboard players, things of that nature. There's two small, what are called monitors. It's for, so a singer can hear themselves singing. And these are real, real little guys. Um, and basically the way they would be set up is they just sit on the floor and they angle up at the person so <coughs> okay uh, you have two of them and connections for those are off to the side here and so there's two new plates that are installed over here everyone can come over and take a look if you want the one on the left is for four microphones one on the right is for four different speaker sounds, okay? two of which are operational now, two of which you can expand to, but all the wiring's in. So you just need additional amplification to have four more. We're talking way down the road. If you would ever go to like a full contemporary service where you would have a full band, uh, then you would need that functionality. The channel's labeled up here, oh, back on the phone. They directly correspond. Uh, so the one on the left is uh, labeled one through four. The one on the right is mix one through four. So that's for these little monitors. Uh, then you have another plate over here, behind there, with four more microphone inputs. So you have a total of eight microphone inputs capability. Okay. In addition. <coughs> Later on, if you decide to do a full contemporary, we also wired for a subwoofer reinforcement, so low frequency reinforcement for the sound system. So if you ever went to having a bass guitar or a keyboard, you would want that uh, low frequency reinforcement because the system itself can't produce that far down in frequency. Uh, so, but it's wired, there's connection plate in that corner and one over in that corner to add little subwoofers later on, okay? Uh, you have two new microphones on pulpit and lectern. These are radically different from the ones you had before. Where they're placed, you don't need to do this. It's made to be used just like that. And you don't really need to move them or adjust them because it has a, a, a Pretty good freedom of movement. You could be a foot to the left, a foot to the right, a foot taller, a foot shorter, and it's going to pick you up exactly the same. So you have that on both sides. Um, in addition, we made connections to uh, all the auxiliary speakers that are in the building. So there's speakers in classrooms, nursery, and things of that nature, all of which are controlled from the board back there. Yeah, that's new. Okay. That's all new, right? There no. Were, there were no speakers? No, that was your existing stuff. The speakers are there, they just weren't. We never could use it. it, okay. it they they used work. to work. I, I, I wired them in with sterile foam in about 20 years ago. So, in an overflow situation at Easter or Christmas, we already have speakers out here? You know. Those are currently non functional. Okay. So, so the part, for part of uh, uh, our contract with you is we, for that portion of it, we said we would connect what you had. Okay. So those did not function, okay. as well as classroom one and two. And classroom eight and 10 also did not function. Gotcha. So okay. we, we can always come back and repair that, but that was not part of the original contract. Okay. Right. How about these two, these two mics? Yeah, they function. They're all good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So for uh, microphone input capabilities, I want to show you this real quick. <coughs> for the monitor, you have two cables to connect these. The speakers themselves can either be daisy chained on one mix, where one fader will control the content that goes to both, or they can be independent, where you control the content that goes to one and control the content that goes to the other all depending on how you open that. So kind of a special plug that's on here. It's a locking plug. I'll show you how to do that. So there's only one way to plug it in. It won't go in any other way because it's keyed until you get to a certain point and then it locks. To release, there's a release on it. You pull up and take it out. In the same way when it, the way it connects to the plate. So I'll plug one in. 
so that you can hear it function. And somebody can plug that into number one on that plate. There you go. Pretty simple. Okay. For video, you have a new pull-down screen and a permanently mounted projector. Okay. So we're going to move on to, that's the basic functionality of your system. So now I'm going to show you how to turn everything on. So whoever's tasked at this, this is the start of your day on Sunday when you come in in the morning. You want to get here early, give time to turn everything on, check, make sure everything works prior to service. Okay, so first thing you want to do is load the screen. Now, I, I don't know, did, Pastor, did Joe talk to you about, uh, you can get like a, a broom pole, you get a hook on it, and you could use that to lower the screen, you could take the string off, mm -hmm. or, that, that, that would be my suggestion, or you got to do this. I like climbing. We do have good insurance for me if I climb and fall. It's called controlled screen return. Okay? What that means is you pull it down and let it go, it'll stop there and slowly lower itself back into the case. Okay. In our parking area, he's going to build a bag to cover that, to hide that. So tomorrow, when you hear people say, oh, that bright white thing, isn't that ugly? <laughs> Just say, right. screen has to be mounted. It'll soon be covered up. That's the way the uh, wiring channels work. Yes. All right, you have a remote for the projector, which we would keep back on top of one equipment rack back there, mm -hmm. so everybody knows where it is. Right? Mm -hmm. Red power button on the remote. You need to stand here, because the reception for the projector is on this side. And if you look up, you see a red light on the bottom of it. When you hit the power button, you want to get up nice and high. Hit the power button, that little red light went out, and it starts blinking. It's kind of so it takes about a minute to warm up. Uh, 2,000 hours. To use it, Two times a week, six years. Do we have replacement bulbs in the last for mortality? Bulbs are a little expensive. Are they? Yeah, they're about five, six hundred bucks. Yeah. You can almost buy a projector. Yeah. Well, not quite. But, you know. <laughs> You're a third of the way there, yeah. It's about a $1,500 projector, maybe 16 Just how much they are, I can't yeah. control that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not something you wouldn't buy in advance because in five years, you yeah. all of Correct. Yeah. In, in larger churches that we install where we put in very expensive projectors, Typically what a church will do is just the projectors they will put on an equipment lease where it's a monthly payment. At the end of the lease, they renew it and get new projectors. Because typically at about that eight, 10 year point, that's when you want to replace them. So, all right, let's go back.